Hi, I'm Junior, and I'm an instructor at Easy Wheels Driving School. Uh, we're a driving school that's been in New Jersey for over 30 years, number one in all tri-state area between as far as New York, New Jersey, and PA. Um, this video is to help anyone who's interested in getting their uh, Class C school bus uh, license and endorsement. And this, this video will show you how to perform the outside inspection, inside inspection. Um, starting, um, so I'm going to get right into it. I have a checklist here that is provided through the DMV, uh, DMV itself. You can get this from any DMV manual. It's free. Um, it has the Class B or Class C checklist. That's what it's called uh, for the passenger or school bus. So you would get this from the manual. You rip it out. You're allowed to have it with you during the exam. This is the reason why I'm holding it now, just to show you that you can actually have it with you. You just cannot have any markings. You could mark it as uh, during the test, but you cannot bring it with any marks on it. So going right into it, sometimes, now this can vary on the examiner and the location, but from what my personal experience, I see them like in a certain pattern. The pattern usually consists of them doing an external light check first. So if the examiner walks up to you while you're waiting and says, let's do an external light check, which is this mark right here, this little checklist of this box, if you get this box, if he tells you to do it, that's actually a free point that he's kind of giving you because he's not waiting for you to tell him. He's telling you when to do it. So it's actually doing you a favor. So if he says external light check first, which is this mark right here, this box, you might as well also do while you're doing that. You're going to also do the school bus only lights since you're he's already outside. So you would do in this case, the school bus, I would do the external light check. And then following, I'm going to do the front and back as well. Emergency light for the school bus and also there's another box here that says stop arms and safety arms which will all turn on at the same time so you're going to check that twice you're going to check it once outside when he's outside and then when you're inside you're going to check the switch and you're also going to explain how it's opening and closing correctly so it's going to be done kind of twice same thing for the lights you're going to do the lights outside with him now and then when you're inside you're going to do the indicator lights on the inside as well all right so i'm going to go inside and i'm going to explain what i'm doing and you guys are gonna see it turn on and off, okay? Now, once I go inside, I'm gonna put on my seatbelt. And I'm gonna put the key in the ignition. And I'm gonna turn the key to the on position. Now, the lights that you wanna check first are the basic signal lights. So you're gonna do left signal, He's going to give you, or the driver's side signal, in this case is my left, he'll give you a thumbs up. Then it'll be the right side, it'll be flashing, he'll give you another thumbs up. You want to make sure your headlights are on so you can do your high beams. Your high beams, he'll mark and say they're good. And then he'll do also the four-way flashers, all right? So my four-way flasher has the lights all working correctly. Now, once you do that, what you do is you hit the master switch, right, on top, and you open up the passenger door. When you do that, your emergency lights should start flashing and alternating. Your stop arm should come out with the lights and your safe arm should also come out, uh, operate forward. You close the door back. Everything should close back inside and turn off and your master switch, you shut it off. Now, once you go to the rear, he'll walk over to the rear. You're gonna do your left signal indicator again He'll, mark, he'll let you know, you know, once it's good, you do your right signal indicator. That's working correctly. Your forward flashers are going to be working correctly, your headlights. And then you want to press on the brake so he can check the brake lights, and those are working correctly as well. Now, you could have left the door open with the master switch on. Maybe I could have had done that a little bit different. But I, in this case, I'm just going to turn it back on, and your emergency lights should be flashing in the rear as well. Now, for the sake of the video, I, I'm not going to restart, but you could have had just probably left the emergency uh, door and open. Well, not the emergency door, the passenger door open along with the stop arm and the front safe arm. And then he just would have walked to the rear and made sure that the lights were working in the back for the hazard lights. Okay? So now that we got that clear, that we checked all the lights, the emergency lights, front, back for the pickup of the children, and and the hazard lights and the signal lights and the high beams, you're set to go. He, you just marked yourselves a couple of boxes here, which will be the external light check. That's already a check that you're going to have. 
the st uh, student lights for the school bus front and back we did that and the stop arm and safety arm for the external part is already good to go all right so i'm going to close the door i'm going to turn off the master switch so make sure to reset and you're going to start now with uh what's here called going by the list an in-vehicle engine start okay so we don't have air this is even though it says air or hydraulic so the air part is for a uh, air brake vehicle we are a hydraulic brake check so what you got to do is you got to pump the brake about three times right and then you're going to hold it for about five seconds making sure that the brake doesn't decompress or move okay so i'm going to pump one two three and then you hold and you count you count loud you count in your head one two three four five five seconds and you will say i didn't feel the brake decompress or move in any way so that's working correctly and then you could let go okay that is a, that is a must do correct uh part of the test you cannot make an error on that little section right there where you pump the brake three times and you hold on for five seconds because if you do make a mistake there it will cause you to automatically fail the test all right now everything else will be by points like we what we did before with the lights those were points continuing on you have something that says the brake and trailer brake check which will be in our case we don't have a trailer but we do uh we have the parking brake test and the service okay so all that consists of would that be at the very end is that we check the parking brake and the service brake all right depending on the room that you have so for instance here i could probably do it now if i would like to so what i could do is i would turn it back on right i make sure that i keep my foot i'm going to make sure i keep my foot on the parking brake i'm going to put the parking brake down so the parking brake is applied i'm going to put it on drive sometimes you can't put it on drive without pressing the service brake press the service brake put it on drive and since the parking brake is holding right i'm going to give it just a tap on the gas to show them that my parking brake is holding correctly all right now i'm going to press the service brake down release the parking brake by pulling on the lever now the parking brake is completely released and I'm gonna actually roll up. I'm, I'm lacking space here, but in the test, you probably can go up about two, three feet, about maybe five miles an hour. You don't have to go too far though. So all you gotta do is just move a little bit. Once you move, you're gonna press the brake, tell them the service brake fully stopped the bus and that you didn't feel the bus pull left or right in any type of way, all right? Then you will put it back on park and you will apply the parking brake again and now the vehicle is secure again. So these are the check boxes. We did the hydraulic brake, which was we press the service brake down three times. One, two, three. We hold it for five seconds. We didn't feel the service brake decompress or move in any way. We did the parking brake test, which was we left the parking brake on. We put it in drive. We gave a little gas. The bus didn't move. It held. And then we released the parking brake, put it in drive, moved about, I don't know, two, three feet, pressed the brake and said, that the service brake has completely stopped the, the, the bus and it didn't pull left or right. From there, you will go to continuing with the interior inspection. So now, again, it says light and indicators, lighting and indicators. So pretty much what you're gonna do is the lights again, all right? So, but this time you're checking the inside of the lights. So you're gonna go, my left indicator is working correctly, my right indicator is working correctly, my four-way flashers are working correctly. And if you have your headlights on, you're gonna press the high beam and my high beam indicator is working correctly. If you notice, I actually was pointing every single time I was speaking of something. You don't have to physically touch anything. It's all about identifying and speaking the right uh, terminology that they're looking for and, and naming the, the part correctly. Continuing on, we got our emergency equipment. So every time I do something, I can mark a box. Remember, once you get a certain amount of points, you're going to pass. So it doesn't even go too far down the list. Sometimes by the time you finish just the front of the tire, you're pretty much almost done with the whole test. He'll stop you even early once you reach a certain amount of points. All right. Going back to what I was saying, emergency equipment. So we look for our emergency equipment. We got a first aid kit, securely mounted, present. We have a seatbelt cutter here, also present. I have an ABC fire extinguisher that's fully charged. Um, it has a lock pin and is up to date. And I have three triangle reflectors here inside this box in case of an emergency. That it consists of the emergency equipment, continuing on with the windshield and the traffic monitor devices. 
That is the front windshield. My front windshield has no obstructions, no illegal stickers, securely mounted, no signs of cracks or damages. That's secure. The monitor devices are the mirrors. So my mirrors are, my driver's side mirror is securely mounted to the bus. Uh, no signs of cracks or damages, no illegal stickers. My passenger mirror, no cracks or damages, no illegal stickers, securely mounted to the bus. And my convex mirrors are securely mounted to the bus with no cracks or damages. The wipers. So for the wipers, it says here, wipers and washers. So you could um, put on your wipers and you hold it to make sure it throws a little bit of liquid. Let it turn on, let it shut off. Once it shuts off, you're gonna say, my wipers are working smoothly. Uh, it has, they have washer fluid. The washer fluid is working. Uh, no signs of dry rod. They're not dry rotted. And they got proper tension against the windshield. So that's another point there. My heater and defrost. Now, depending on the season. So if it's um, the summer, usually they prefer you not to turn it physically on. You are allowed to just say it verbally. Um, but in the winter, obviously, you want to turn it on. Now, for the sake of the video, I'm going to just explain and try to demonstrate a little bit. I, if I was to check the defrost and the heater, right? First, I would probably do the heater uh, or the defrost first. Sorry, I'm going to do the defrost. I would turn this knob all the way to the right here where it says defrost, okay? It's on my defrost. I would turn it all the way to the heat and I would turn the fan on. I put my hand on top and I would say, oh, I, the, the defrost is working correctly to check the um, heater unit, I would turn it back all the way to the left for for not to be on defrost but to be on the vents. Probably actually not all the way to the left in this vehicle. And this vehicle will be for the front vents and the lower seats. Make sure it stays on heat. Make sure the fan stays on. And I would say my heater unit is working on top and bottom. Now it's, it's, we're still in the uh, summertime so I'm going to put this back to AC. Okay. Um, like I said, depending on the season, it's not really mandatory to turn on and off. Uh, uh, you could just explain it correctly in detail. I would turn it to defrost. I would put it to the heater, put the fan on, put my hand on top. Defrost is working. Then turn it to the vents and say my heater unit on top and bottom is working correctly. Another box. And we're almost at the end of the boxes for the external, uh, for the interior part. The last thing is the horn. So my electrical horn is working correctly. As you notice, I nailed every single box, hydraulic, parking brake, service brake, lighting, emergency, wind, uh, windshield, traffic and mounted devices, wipers and washers, heaters and defrosters and horns. I'm, not, I'm checking every box off, so it's almost impossible to fail if I'm marking all these boxes. As long as you take your time, um, you don't have to do it as fast as I am. You can do it much slower, pace yourself, and you uh, express yourself correctly. Marking these boxes as you go down the list, you're going to pass this part of the test. So now it says passenger and school bus only, okay? So this is a passenger vehicle and a school bus. It's asking for the passenger entry and lift. We don't have a lift though. So we do have an entry, which is this passenger door here. You would open it. In this case, I lift my thumb to lift this up. I open it, fully extend it. My passenger door opens and closes correctly. I would say my steps are clear from any debris. There's no, uh, there's, no, there's no garbage or anything on the steps, and there's no signs of damage. And then you can close it to show him that the door is opening and functioning correctly. Um, that's the, now, as far as the back goes, it's continuous, it says emergency, or like all emergency exits uh, and passenger seatings and passenger monitoring devices. So before I get up, since in this case it says passenger monitor devices, I had to skip the exits and the seating just so I can check these mirrors here. So this is a passenger monitor device here. Um, you, go, you might also have a camera. You can say the camera is not damaged. In this case, we have one there. Our rear view mirrors are not cracked or damaged and securely mounted, same as this one. Rear view mirrors, I can see all my passengers clear as day here. Uh, and they're securely mounted, no cracks. Okay, now I'm gonna go and do the emergency exits and passenger seatings. So, I would make sure that the switch is on still because you want the emergency uh, uh, door to sound once you open it and and the exits so i may and, and if in other in some cases some buses not only the switches is, is uh enough you might have to actually have the vehicle on okay so you're gonna get up and you're gonna go i would do in this case i probably would do first let's say this hatchet here all you gotta do is open it turn it right and then you open and you would say my emergency door is working is opening and closes correctly and 
and then you pull it back down. All right. Over here, you will say my emergency window opens and closes correctly. The alarm is sounding. The emergency door exit opens and closes properly. The emergency door opens and closes properly. The alarm is sounding. And you don't have to check every single one. If, if you did one, you could say, oh, I checked my emergency exit window. Uh, I, opened the, I opened it. I closed it. The alarm was sounding. I, if you have multiple, you could say, I will do every single other one exactly the same way as I presented that one. And that would be enough. Now, also, remember what we said, the seatings. So going now to the seats, you could say, I'm going to check my passenger seats to make sure they're not loose or damage that they're securely mounted to their frames that their frames are securely mounted to the bus floor with the bolts and nuts and all the seat belts are secure they're not cut and they're present and then again you wouldn't have to do every single seat by you just demonstrating one or two you can say i would check every single additional seat the same way i presented these again my seats are not uh, damaged in any way securely mounted to the frame the frame itself is securely mounted to the bus floor with the bolts and nuts. All the seat belts are present. None of them are cut or ripped or frayed. And that would conclude, if you look at the list, for the emergency seats, passenger seating, and the monitor devices. So we're actually done all these check boxes all the way down up to here. And actually, we did these already, which is the student lights front and back. We did that in the very beginning. We did the arms and and the first a uh, kit and body fluid we did as well. Now, as far as the arms go, if you want one more time while you're inside, actually, maybe when I was doing the interior light check, I could have presented also the emergency switch to make sure that the alarms are working. So just for the sake of the video, I really don't want to restart. I'm just going to tell you what I would have done. When we were doing the light checks, right, left signal indicator, and we did the right signal indicator, and we did the four ways and the high beams, that probably would have been the best time for me to say, I'm going to check also my emergency door, uh, arms, stop arm, safe arm work with the lights. So I would hit the switch, right? Open this door. Again, my stop arm came out, it's flashing. My uh, safe arm is out and my lights are on top. I can see them in the mirrors. They're flashing and working correctly. And this is the view from the inside. So I will close the door and turn off the switch to make sure everything is working correctly and everything is off. Actually, the yellow amber lights are also working. So I hit it again, so that's why it turned on. So I'm gonna shut that off now. That's what you have to actually check the amber lights and the emergency lights. So one more time, I open, I hit the switch. The yellow amber lights come on first. When you open the door, then the emergency red lights come on. You close it. They shut off perfect all right so ambers and then the emergency and that should conclude all the boxes now from here it will say front of the vehicle and engine area but to be honest you need about maybe four four more boxes or maybe somewhere around the tires it's very rare that you'll get to the side of the vehicle or rear that's only if you're missing a lot of the checkpoints then they'll make you go a little further they won't stop you to see if you achieve a certain amount of points but nine out of ten times when you get to that area and you achieve the points they don't continue that part of the, of the test they say okay you already achieved your points go inside and go and do your next your maneuvers so we're gonna go outside now I'm gonna start doing the front of the vehicle for this for this part of the test before we go outside once you shut it off you'll notice that the alarm is sounding the reason that was is because I did the master switch to check when I open the master switch and I open the door. So in the test, if you don't know how to turn this off, it will cause you to fail. When this happens, they'll give you a certain amount of time to fix this problem. All you have to do is turn the key to the on position switch, which I'm gonna leave it there in the ignition when it's on. And you're gonna walk over to the back and you're gonna have a button over here that you're gonna have to hold and press. Remember, the key must be on the on position. And I'm gonna come and hold this for about three or five seconds. You're gonna hear a beep sound. Once you hear it, it sounded beep, 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 beep. After a few seconds, maybe three to five seconds, now I will be able to remove the key and you'll see that there's no more alarm. Now you can't, you cannot not uh, make sure that you turn that off because I have seen and witnessed of my user experience, people not knowing how to turn that off 
and it causes them to fail. So remember, once you do the master switch and you're completely done, in order for it not to keep sounding, you, you're gonna have to leave the switch on the on position, you're gonna have to walk over to the back, hold the button for about three to five seconds, and now we're ready to go outside. Okay, so now on the outside, we're gonna walk outside. I'm gonna open up the hood, one second. I'm gonna pull the latch over here to have it ready. But I'm gonna explain something about that in a second. So I pull the latch to make sure that it's able to open up. Now, for the outside inspection, note that physically touching parts doesn't give you any extra points. It's all about, again, just explaining and pointing the general direction. I have seen people take their tests and the examiner tell them, don't even open up the hood. Just tell me from the outside and still pass. So that's more than enough proof that it's not like touching the part. It's just naming it correctly, pointing in the general part uh, area, sorry, and then just saying the correct details. Now, the correct details. A lot of people get accustomed to using very simple words and saying it over and over and over. Like, oh, my whole my bus is in good condition. Uh, no crack, no damage, good condition. That will cause you to fail. What you want to use is certain words like when it's a metal component. Um, you want to say no bends, no dents, no legal welds, uh, no excessive rust. If it's uh, like a hose or some kind of thread, then you can use phrases like, oh, it's not ripped, torn, frayed, um, no bulging, and so on. If it has multiple pieces or multiple components, say not missing any parts, all the, um, all the, all the parts are present and, and visible. And, and then only if it's like plastic, or like glass, then you can use the word that commonly used as crack, so not crack the damage. Um, that's, that's the best way to describe when they say lacking detail. A lot of people take their tests and the examiner says you failed because of lack of, de of the detail, and the lack of detail is that. It's just that you're using the same thing over and over. Oh, it's in good condition, good condition, not cracked or, bro or broken, and that's gonna cause you to fail. So it's just changing words here and there will show him that you have uh, some sense of what you're talking about, and then you'll be fine. So going back to the checklist, which I strongly recommend you have, front of the vehicle, it says lenses. So the lenses are, the headlight lenses are clear, not cracked, because it's glass, right? So this is where I use the word not cracked. My front hazard lights here are proper color amber, they're not cracked or damaged. My clearance lights are all present, proper color amber, not cracked or broken. My alternating lights for the school bus, red and amber, are not cracked or damaged, the lenses are present. Again, headlights, lens not cracked or damaged, and hazard lights are proper color amber, not cracked or broken. That's how simple that is as far as the lenses go. Fluid levels. Now, for the sake of the video, I'm going to actually open up the hood. I already popped it up, so I'm going to open it up completely here. And so over here, when you start, it says the first thing you should check is for fluid levels, right? So for fluid levels, we have, you can put the little hook to make sure it latches on there. Victor helped me out. So over here, when we start out, you want to make sure you hit all. In our case, we have four. We have the coolant reservoir, which is here. I have a dipstick for the engine, a dipstick for the transmission. I have a power steam reservoir and I have a brake reservoir. These are the ones that I have to make sure that the levels are full. So I can clearly see that the is at adequate level here for the coolant reservoir and there's no signs of leaking. It's plastic, so I can use it's not cracked or damaged, it's dry. So that's the that's the reason there's no signs of leaks, is it's dry. And the hoses that connect to and from it are not rip cut or frayed and they're dry and they have their clamps. And it's currently hot, so I cannot open it to check it uh, myself. The dipsticks. We have the engine dipstick, so I would pull that out. I would have a rag, wipe it clean. Now, you don't have to physically do this. Again, this is all verbal. Like how I'm doing now, the way I'm speaking is what you would say. I will take it out, wipe it clean, reinsert it, take it back out, make sure it's at the adequate level above the ad line. For the transmission fluid, same thing. You would take it out, you would wipe it clean, you reinsert it, you take it back out, and you make sure it's above the adequate ad line. You check those are, those are the coolant reservoir and the dipsticks for the engine transmission. Your power steam reservoir also has a little dipstick. You can explain, oh, if I wanted to check it, I would just open it, wipe it clean, reinsert it, and make sure it's at the uh, adequate ad line. And the brake fluid is, is very visible. You can see right through that it's at the adequate ad line, it's full.
okay so that hit that hit all the markers as far as the fluid levels now it does say to check the uh, the fluids again, but what I missed to say, what I said here was that there was no crack. You want to add that to this over here. So you want to say my power steering reservoir has no signs of leaks. It's dry. All the hoses that connect to and from it. Remember, the hoses are like uh, made of thread or rubber. You could say not rip afraid to cut, and they're not leaking and they're dry. My brake uh, reservoir is plastic, so that's not cracked or leaking. It's dry, and all the hoses that connect to and from it on our rip cutter freight or leaking. So what I added more detail. So I, I, I checked the levels and I also checked to see if there were damage in any way. And that's perfect, that's what he wants. So now he'll give you all these boxes. So we did the lenses, we did the fluid levels, and then we did the fluid and air leaks. Now, this vehicle does, is not an air brake vehicle. So that doesn't comply to this. But if it was an air brake vehicle, like an air brake bus class B, then you would do for air leaks. You make sure that the air compressor is not leaking. All right. But that's just it's because it said it on the same checklist doesn't mean it applies to you, depending on the vehicle that you're using. OK. Steering system. Now, since we're doing the steering system and the power steering uh, reservoirs here, if you look in the general direction towards down, you'll see that, it, and it's hard to see, you don't, like I said, you don't have to actually physically see it. As long as you point to the general direction and you know what to say, you would say the power steering, uh, I mean, the power steering gearbox is present. It shouldn't be missing any components or parts. It should be securely mounted. Um, all the hoses that connect to it should have no rip cuts or frays or leaking. Connecting to that should be the pimpman arm, which is a solid metal piece that connects to it. And you would say it's metal, no bends, no dents, no welding, no excessive rust. It should have a mounting bolt on, uh, on top and maybe a castanet with a cotter pin on the bottom. Connecting to that would be a drag link, another solid metal, very repetitive. You would say no bends, no dents, no welding, no rust. It should be right in this general area right here. Like I said, you don't really have to physically touch it, just point to the general area. Again, no bends, dents, welding, or rust. Has a castle nut with a cotter key. And then the steering knuckle is in the rear. It has uh, no bends, dents, welding, or rust. Castle nut and cotter key as well. And then a tie rod that connects both tires. It's part of the steering. No bends, dents, uh, welding, or excessive rust. And the castle nut and cotter key. I'm going to say it one more time slowly. When it comes to metal, no bends, no dents, no welding, no excessive rust. It's good to four terms to use. Anything else you want to add to that is more than fine. Just so they know that you're using the right terms to the right part. Okay. Um, continuing. So that would be concluding the steering system complete. We're pretty much down all the way down to the now the steering axle, which goes to the tires. Um, around this area is when you should be almost done. Uh, even maybe even sooner, depending on the examiner and how he's uh, scoring you. So when it comes to the tire, you want to make sure it has four thirty second of thread. And you don't have to have it with you, but you would explain that you would use a measuring gauge to make sure it has amount, that amount of thread, 430 seconds of thread, no less than that, okay? It also has to have at least at least about 80 to 70 pounds of pressure, okay? Uh, it, it, the max is 80, it shouldn't have no less than 70. And you would say, I would check that with a pressure gauge, I would put it in the air stem and make sure it has at least 70 pounds of pressure. If it doesn't have that adequate level of pressure, you will have to add air. Continuing on to that, you have, it says here, rim. So my rim is solid metal. So I would say no bends, no dents, no welding, no excessive rust. My lug nuts, it says lug nuts. So I would go to the lug nuts, point them and say they're all present. No rust trails or shiny metals that will indicate that they're loose. Because with your hand, you will not be able to tell if they're loose. But if you see any shiny threads or, or shiny metals around them or any type of rust trail, that could be an indication that they're, they're loose and you might want to get them checked. So all my uh, lug nuts are present, no rust trail, no shiny metals. My spring and airbags, this does not have airbags. This does have a coil. So my spring coil is not, uh, no bends, no dents, no excessive, uh, no excessive rust, and no welding, because it's solid metal as well, um, and it's securely mounted to the bus. Um, like I said, no airbags. It, does, it might have also a shock absorber, so the shock absorbers are not leaking any hydraulic fluids, and they have their upper connection secure with the mounting bolts and lower connection secure as well. Then you have the brake lines and hoses, so you would say all the hoses that connect in any shape or form from here from the brake line system, if it has, they're not rip cut or frayed in any way, and they're secure. That can contain of anything, there's uh, any line or hoses underneath there. Okay, so and brake contamination. So you want to make sure you check the brake pads and you want to make sure the caliber is not leaking in any way or and, and there's no corrosion or any debris between the brake pads and the brake uh, caliper. 
And you want to also say that the brake pads are no, are no less than at least a quarter, a quarter of an inch material. Uh, can be less than that. And that will conclude the brake uh, contamination and the steering axle compartment. So I'm just going by the checklist here. By this part right here, usually 9 out of 10 times, you're pretty much already done. He'll say, all right, you're good to go. You got more than enough points, and you're going to continue on. But if he hasn't stopped you, you might have missed some points. And then he's, you still have a few more check boxes that you can make up, which is only at the end here, which is about, I would say, another six or seven boxes. So side of the vehicle is going to be a return to lenses and reflectors. So you will come to the side. Now, this would be more like making up the points now, just so if you missed any. So you got to... Clearance light here, that's proper color amber, not crack the damage. You can mention these uh, st alternating stop lights here on the, on the arm. They're red, not cracked or broken. They have to be color red, these right here. On the side of the vehicle, these have to be amber, not crack the damage, and secure. Um, I don't see any reflector tape currently, but if you do have reflector tape, you will mention it. Um, it has to be uh, red and, and white and so on. And here we do have... Uh, actually a reflector tape. I just couldn't see it. It's actually yellow here is amber and you can mark it and say it's more than 50% on the trailer. Okay. Um, lenses and reflectors. That covers the lenses and the reflectors. Over here we also have one reflector. It's proper color red, not cracked or damaged. It's red in the back, amber in the front. Traffic monitor devices, which is the next box. So then you're going to go right back to the mirrors. My monitor device for the traffic is securely mounted to the vehicle. Uh, the, it's, it's, it's glass, right? So it's not cracked or damaged, no illegal stickers. My convex mirror is securely mounted to the bus. All the bolts and uh, nuts are present, not loose. And the glass is not cracked or damaged. Okay, lenses and reflectors, traffic command devices, the battery. Now the battery in this bus is actually in the front. So we're going to come over here. My battery, I don't see any signs of uh, battery acid dripping, no corrosions. All the hoses are secure and sealed correctly. No signs of damage or, or leaks in any way. And that would be the battery. Fuel tank, come to the side here. Has to have a fuel cap present. Fuel cap has a strap. It's sealed and, and locked, uh, closed. I don't see any drips or any type of wetness or uh, puddles underneath that would indicate that it's leaking. So it's, it's dry underneath the tank. The tank has, has to have no cracks or holes, and the fuel line cannot be rip, cut, or frayed. Remember, see how I'm saying these terms? It's a hose, not rip, cut, or frayed, not leaking. If it's metal, no bends, dents, or welding. And, you know, if it's uh, like plastic or glass, no cracks or damage. Just keep, keep reminding yourself that so you don't mess up and say, oh, yeah, the, the whole bus is in good condition. Okay? Um, that's the fuel tank. Finally, we go up to the frame. So on the bottom, you just crush down a little bit and say my friend, my frame, no bend, no bends or dents, no welding, no excessive rust on the whole uh, frame and the chassis of the bus. And then we're at the last box, which is at the rear of the vehicle with the lenses and reflectors. So now we're going to walk towards the back of the bus. We're going to mention the lights. So it says lenses. So signal lights, brake lights, reverse lights. The lenses are not cracked or damaged, red for the signal light, red for the brake, clear for the reverse. A tail light is also red and not cracked or damaged, present. My reflector is not cracked or broken. My clearance lights are all proper color red or cracked, not cracked or damaged. My amber light for my alternated school bus lights are not cracked or broken. Same for the red lights, um, they're not cracked or damaged and present. And we do have yellow reflector tape present. And then you can repeat here quickly. It would be my school bus, red and yellow lights are not cracked or damaged on the lenses, proper color. Signal lights, brake lights, reverse lights. These are red for the signal and the brake, proper color. Re clear for the reverse and not cracked or damaged or present. And my tail light is proper color red, not cracked or broken, and reflector. And that will conclude at the very end of the checklist. Now, I would, I, I would strongly hope that that doesn't happen and you go this far because if you go by what I showed you, I can pretty much almost guarantee that by half of this checklist, you're acing this test because if as long as you get those boxes and you're hitting those markers, you should breeze through this. Hopefully, this video helps you guys. This is Easy Wheels Driving School. We're here for you guys uh, to provide our services. Like I said, we're in the tri-state area, New Jersey, 
PA and New York. We are the number one school. We have the highest rating. We do the one-on-one -on -one training. Unlike any other school, you do get one, one instructor for yourself throughout your whole class. I can guarantee that you will have uh, excellent service and actual absolute best training because uh, I'm going to dedicate all my time just to you where a lot of schools, they do a big group training. You go to a yard, you might have 50 students and one instructor. It's so hard to learn that way, where our services is just a one-on-one, -on -one, and I think that's the best way to learn. So I hope to see you guys soon. My name is Junior. Um, I'm, I'm happy to help you guys in any shape or, or way or form. Check out our other videos. We have videos on the regular bus, Class B, Class A, and so on. So I wish you guys all the best on your new journey, and I'll see you guys all soon. You guys take care.